Um, moving forward, uh, should we take some of the questions that we, uh, our participants have shared with us? I will uh, share the question and the panelist who is most comfortable in answering that can uh, talk. What is the significance of resistive exercises? Can Dr. Seema take this question, please? Sure. Uh, actually, it is said, a uh, lot of literature is on there that the way lymphatics, they really work along with our uh, contraction, muscle contraction. So if we do resistive exercises, the lymphangion motoricity, what I spoke in physiology, it really goes 20 times. So if a limb is edematous, we initially thought that exercise may worsen it. But there's a lot of literature which talks of even when they were given something like rowing activity, the edema does, did not worsen. So if they are doing exercises with weights or with therabands, but it has to be in a graded manner. There, there is a lot of literature which talks even 6, six to 8 MET. If we work on that uh, aerobic capacity of a patient, it is not harmful. And working on their 6 to 8 RM, that is repetition maximum. So if when one works with that kind of strength also, giving the resistance to the patient and gradually build it up, it will really help training back their edema. And patients doing diaphragmatic breathing along with exercise can really have it maintained also way well for longer period. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this is a question for Dr. Siddharth Sani. What is meant by highly suspicious of carcinoma left breast? It came in my mother's FNAC report and I'm worried. Yes. So, uh, thanks, Sushila. Yeah, it's uh, highly suspicious of carcinoma is what most FNACs would be reported as where uh, there is potentially malignant or cancer cells seen because uh, there is no clear structure. You can only see cells. We don't really do FNACs that much any longer in most press centers in the world, uh, but we prefer to do core biopsies, which is also an office procedure with a bigger needle. The advantage here is that we would get a chunk of or many chunks of tissue out with no uh, risk to the patient of any spread, but we would get the complete answer. If the biopsy uh, has cancer, it's very definitive, and we can do further tests to see what type of cancer, but definitely. Anyone with a bi with an FNAC result of suspicious for malignancy must get a core biopsy done. And but before the and before the biopsy, if you should so choose and you haven't had any imaging done, such as a mammogram or an MRI scan, then those must be done followed by the biopsy. And please see a specialist at the earliest opportunity that you have. Uh, sorry, I was mute. Uh, any ways to prevent metastasis? Would Dr. Sapna Nangya like to take this question, ma'am? So, so uh, one thing one must understand is that whatever you know, treatment we do in addition to surgery, surgery in itself, of course, but every treatment that we do to, in addition to surgery is actually directed towards preventing metastasis. So whether it be chemotherapy, whether it be hormone therapy um, uh, or uh, anti hurt new therapy, they are basically aimed at preventing metastases. So treatment in itself is one of the ways in which we pretend, prevent metastases. Then all local therapies. So once we have taken care of the local uh, part of the tumor, whether it be surgery or radiation, this prevents further dissemination. So this is also a method of reducing meta the risk of metastases. And then there are some lifestyle changes, especially for postmenopausal women. It's important to exercise regularly. So 30 minutes of exercise, at least three to four times a week has been found to be protective. And maintaining body weight in your in the normal, uh, what is called the normal BMI range, which is under 25, is, has also been found to be one method of reducing metastasis. Thank you, ma'am. Um, 
How will comorbidities affect breast cancer patients after surgery? Dr. Sani? Okay. Yeah, hi. So comorbidities, um, the, uh, the few that really matter, uh, the first is diabetes. Diabetes, if it is well controlled, we can hope for a reduction in the time, if in case a drain is used, uh, a reduction in the time of the drain being in there. Also, the healing is better if the diabetic control is there because without the diabetes being controlled adequately, uh, healing is almost impossible and infection is almost a certainty and the axilla, if it is cleared, will never stop draining. That's for me possibly the most important comorbidity in a breast cancer patient. Uh, also, if you look at most diabetics or hypertensives, uh, they, are, they don't tend to be obese. They have a BMI which is 25 or more. And uh, even though, God bless them, I've never met a woman who's happy with her weight. It's an actually, uh, 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 you know, a, a medical definition of height is to weight. And uh, uh, 70 kilos in a woman who's 5 feet 11 or, uh, you know, 5'10", as they are in, say, the Netherlands or uh, even the UK, is normal weight. But 70 kilograms in somebody who's 5 feet 3 makes them medically obese. Uh, this, what this does is it creates uh, insulin resistance and that prevents, it just doesn't call it diabetes, it prevents the insulin from exerting its true effects, which are the healing effects in the body. So we come back uh, right to the beginning of the, uh, of the lecture series. It has been of this webinar with Dr. Singal, with self, with Dr. Dangia and Dr. Grover. BMI is being highlighted again and again and again, and especially central obesity. That for me is the second big comorbidity. Uh, in terms of surgery, hypertension, if it's controlled or other factors are usually taken care of before we take the patient up for any procedure. So they don't really have that much of an impact. The third would be any, any condition which causes uh, immunodeficiency. But again, if we do, if one does a good history and a thorough pre-op workout, uh, it doesn't really play out in the end too much uh, disadvantage for the patient. So the two that really have an impact on how the patient will do post-op are uh, an increased BMI and diabetes, most importantly. Thank you, Dr. Sani. Uh, there is a very important question. How to detect breast cancer early? Would you like to take this, ma'am, Dr. Sapna Nangya? So the method of detecting breast cancer early is actually uh, to undergo screening, regular screening. So um, basically that is the method by which one can do yeah, yeah. yeah, I, I can just add uh, yeah, Dr. Sure. Sheila, when yes, women sir. ask me when women ask me what's the best time for them to go for a mammogram my immediate answer is when you don't have any sign or symptom. You don't go for a lipid profile after you've had the stroke or the heart attack. That will be done in any case. So you don't wait for a lump to appear before you go for a mammogram and the current guidelines are uh, every year from the age of 40 uh, till one can afford to physically as well as financially get to a center that does a mammogram. This is a huge myth that yearly mammograms cause uh, risk from radiation. Uh, there is none. It's now been proven. And uh, or should we do it every two years? Every two years is done in countries where the government is putting the bill. That's the National Health Services. Uh, for them to do a, a layout, uh, both in terms of manpower as well as expense, just does not fit into the GDP at all. Hence, they do it every two years. But if you're doing it privately, do it every year after you're 40. It saves lives. Right. right. Uh, really thankful, Dr. Sani. I think uh, on that note, there are several questions, in fact, which we will be answering individually mm -hmm. uh, later. But uh, we would, I would like to thank NRF for making this program possible. This is the team that is uh, at the core of activities at NRF. I would like to applaud them for all their uh, hard work and good work. So with this, we come to the end of this program. I would like to thank every one of you whose participation has made today's program such a meaningful exercise. Thank you. I'd like to thank uh, Ms. Raji and I'd also like to thank you, Dr. Sheila. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, uh, for having organized this.
Thanks very much and thanks to all the attendees. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you everyone. Thank you.